welcome back to my channel. I'm Ginny Mae, the Intergalactic Supreme Goddess of Guest Service, and today I want to talk about how to handle a tray. Some of you might just be starting in the restaurant business, and of course the tray can be a little bit scary sometimes. So let's just take some basics on how to balance a tray and talk about handling the tray today. And for those of you that are just visiting my channel for the first time, my name is Ginny Mae, I'm the Intergalactic Supreme Goddess of Guest Service, and welcome! Let's talk about the tray in itself. Of course, there's many different trays out there. I personally like this type of tray because it has kind of like a sticky surface to it, but I know that I've also worked with other trays that are totally metal and have like a higher rim on it, and those are really good for holding beers, and in case something ends up spilling, then you kind of contains it all in the tray. But the thing about it is that it can slip and slide around. And so that's why I really like this tray, or this type of tray anyway, and of course this one comes in all different sizes as well, uh, from like about half this size to like three times as big, and then you have this super big food tray as well. But let's talk about this size because this is pretty close to what uh, you usually see in, in a lot of different restaurants. The first thing is that how are you holding the tray? I personally like to hold my tray flat. Some people like to hold it a little bit up like this. The difference is, is if you hold it up like this, then of course you're balancing on your fingertips. If you're holding it straight down, it's almost like having a baseball glove on in a way, but you need to be really careful that you're using your bicep muscle and keeping this hand straight underneath because if you're flipping back and forth like this, you can actually start hurting your wrist, maybe get carpal tunnel syndrome, and that is definitely not the plan here. So if you're using it flat like I am, of course, keep your hand and everything flat and then use your bicep muscle in order to hold the things on the tray. Some of you may have actually visited uh, these theme parks where there's roller coasters and all these different rides before, and this next technique really reminds me of this ride right here, and it's, one of these that kind of go like this. So, hey, you know what? Get a tray and do it along with me. And I just want to let you know that if you're like, oh, I can't do this at work, or there's really nowhere to do it at work, or there's not enough space in the back room to do it, you know what? Maybe ask your manager if you can take a tray home with you. If you bring it back the next day, wouldn't that be all right? Then you can practice a little bit with it. But the first thing you do is, if you're looking at my shoulder here, is just go back and forth with the tray until you kind of get a feeling of what's going on. And you'll find out you can actually go pretty high up and your hand is kind of sticking there to the tray as well. And you just kind of get the feeling of going back and forth. And then let's put some different things on the tray. So we have some different items on the tray and then we're gonna end up doing it again. While you're doing it, remember to look right at my shoulder or out wherever you are standing or walking. Maybe not walking yet, we'll get there. And go back and forth and really feel uh, what's going on. Now I want you to look at the objects on your tray and do it. You might find it's a little bit harder and a little bit more wobbly. That's actually a good thing to remember because when you're handling a tray, you never want to look at the tray because that's a moving object and how can you actually uh, balance when you're focusing on a moving object. So when you're walking downstairs or you're walking through the dining room and you have a full tray of maybe cocktails or beers for example, I always use like the little eye to look down to see where everything is but then of course look straight ahead and that's going to have, help your balance. Because actually what's happening right now is that your hand, if you're not looking at the tray, your hand is taking total control of the balance, of course with your brain helping. But if you're looking at the tray, then it's your eye and your hand and your brain that is trying to balance this out. And your hand and your eye, of course, are having a little conflict here and that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. So never stare at the tray when you're going through the dining room. As you can see, the sticky surface is pretty much holding this on. I probably would try it with the uh, full beers or full cocktails, but it just gives you an idea of how much leeway you actually have. So as you're walking through the dining room, remember to look out and just a little bit down so you, so you know where you are and remembering to use your upper arm, your bicep, in order to, to hold this. It's almost just like an extension of your arm. 
So when you get down to the table, now the tricky part is, is that of course you have to unload this tray a little bit. And as you can feel right now, what is happening is the fingers that are on the tray are kind of pressing back and forth, trying to make sure that the tray is balanced. And that's fine because that is actually working quite well for you. But as you're taking off, I can highly recommend to take the most dangerous thing off. And of course that's the heaviest thing, the thing filled with the, the most liquid, for example. Put that on the table first and then work around your tray so it's a little bit balanced so you end up having it sort of balanced all the time. I almost think of it as a spiral. So if I'm taking the most dangerous thing down, I have a really low table here, um, and then the next most dangerous, and then I have this little plate of appetizers, I will put that down uh, the very last. And let's say that you have a beer. So let's say that you have a beer and you're like, hey, I really need two hands to fill up this beer because if you just pour the beer at the table like this, it's gonna get a bunch of bubbles. And for beer drinkers who, yeah, you just don't want a lot of bubbles. Let's say you go down with a beer and you're thinking, how the heck am I gonna end up pouring this? Because you need two hands to pour a beer. Well, most beers anyway. If I just ended up pouring this beer into the glass, it might get super foamy on top and the head will be too big and it's going to be hard for your guests to drink or they're gonna to have to wait a while to drink it. And that's just not the goal. You want your guests to be able to drink the beer right away because then maybe you can offer them a second beer later on. So of course you need two hands. So what are you going to end up doing? Well, the first thing is you're going to end up setting your beer down and I have my low table again. I will pick it up and then I would take the tray and I would put it uh, just kind of under my arm. Maybe not the way all the way up to the armpit because you're a little sweaty, that's gross. And uh, your guests will also notice that. So just a little farther down. And as you notice when it's down here, I can actually do everything with my arms. So then I will take my beer and open it of course. And then I would chuck, 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 chuck. And pour it in the glass and then I will set it back down on the table. When you first start, it's sometimes easiest if you can unload all your things on the table that's closest, on the part of the table that's closest to you, put it under your arm, and then you can pour up for one person and go around and pour up for everybody else. Um, because a lot of times in the restaurant, the tables are not so big. So you should never really count on that you can end up setting the tray down on the table and unloading it with two hands. I always practice that you never have to set that tray on the table in case you get to a situation where you can't and then you already practice so you're all ready for it. A couple things is I think the underarm place is best to just hold your tray for a couple moments but I've also seen before unfortunately people putting it between their legs and that is definitely not a, a good thing to do. The other thing is when you're looking around at your tables to see who is missing what or just kind of observing to make sure that all your guests are doing all right, then how should you stand with the tray? One way is you can stand like this, uh, but I would never stand like this because if you think about it, what type of communication am I getting if I'm standing like this? Maybe I'm scared, I'm shy, I'm hiding behind my tray. And of course that's not the, the communication you want to get. You want to give the communication like, hey, I'm in control, I'm here for you, I'm going to be, I'm going to get you another beer. So another way you can stand is with the tray behind you and maybe just down at your side is a, a good communication, a positive communication to let your guests know that you're there, but you're also ready with your tray. I feel that the tray is one of the most important things to have on you all the time. I personally love to serve food with the tray down to the table. I know a lot of you are serving uh, plates just in your hand and of course that's great. It depends on your restaurant and how your service and how your manager would like the service to be in your restaurant. But I personally like taking everything with the tray and holding onto the tray the whole time because it just gives me a bigger service to pick up more glasses. And I just want to have another, a couple more tips for you. And that is when you take a glass off the table or on the table, remember to hold the glass as low as you can. Um, not like that, because of course, if you, you know, have been touching something else, that's really gross. So always uh, down at the bottom if it's stemware, a wine glass, for example, also down at the bottom, and never pick up beer glasses like this. That is gross. People have been 
drinking out of them. And of course, when you're at the restaurant, you should be washing your hands all the time. But you're thinking, oh, I need to wash my hands to protect my guests. Yes, but you also need to wash your hands to protect yourself. Because if you think about it, depending on how busy your restaurant is, you're seeing many, many guests throughout the week and many guests throughout the day. And if you're picking up glasses like this off the table, you're touching everyone else's mouth. And if you end up touching your nose or whatever throughout your shift, you're gonna end up getting, getting what they have. They came in and they weren't feeling so well, it's gonna be easy for you to get. So protect yourself as well by washing your hands. Also keep your tray nice and clean because a clean tray is uh, just like clean hands and your guests will see that your tray is clean and of course that will give a feeling that the kitchen is also clean. So if you have any tips and tricks about using the tray that you feel is useful, leave me a comment below. Or if you use any of the tips or tricks that I've been talking about today, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear where you're from and go give amazing service. I'm Judy May, the Intergalactic Supreme Goddess of Guest Service, and if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by pressing my face right here. Otherwise, if you'd like to see another video, just press here. I thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!